Heidi Ho, Arkansas Pilgrim here again, and I'm in the kitchen today. And today, I'm going to show you how to make fermented milk products. Sounds pretty nasty, doesn't it? Yeah, that's why they usually don't call it fermented milk. They call it cultured, cultured buttermilk. It's so easy to make your own buttermilk, and it's way cheaper than buying it, and it's way better. It's made by a process called lacto-fermentation. I won't get into a Mr. Wizard thing today describing it, but it basically is taking the naturally occurring bacteria in milk and allowing it to grow at the expense of dangerous bacteria. And the process it goes through, it makes lactic acid, and the lower the acidity, the lower pH of the milk kills off harmful bacteria and, and allows the healthy, good bacteria to grow. And that's enough for the science lesson. Uh, you may have heard from about lacto-fermentation on the Page Family Homestead, and hopefully I'm not stepping on their toes and moving into their territory with this. But I don't think so. They've gone off and gotten into dehydration now, so maybe they're leaving fermentation alone. Or at least they're not videoing about it. Anyway, you ought to go check them out, because one thing, they're a hoot. And another, they've got a lot of great videos on how to preserve food, whether it's dehydration or fermentation or canning. And they also have a lot of cooking videos on some really delicious food. So go check them out. That's Page Family Homestead, P-A-I-G-E. Now, back to the subject at hand. It's really very simple. All you do is take fresh raw milk from your milk goat or milk cow, put it in a nice clean container, cover it up with some cloth, and then stick it in a cool, dark corner for about three or four days, and the naturally occurring bacteria will make it into buttermilk. Isn't that easy? Don't you hate do-it-yourself videos it's like that? I've seen them on Instructables all the time where they say, here's this easy thing to do, and the main ingredient or the main thing you need is something that only that person or very few people actually have access to without actually having to go spend, maybe even spend more money than they would on buying the thing you're supposed to be making. Those kind of how-to videos or Instructables reminds me of the old Steve Martin bit. See, how does it go? You can be a millionaire and pay no taxes. First, get a million dollars. Not real helpful, is it? I don't have a milk goat. I don't have a milk cow. And not a lot of homesteaders do. That's a step up that uh, entails a lot. You have to be really concerned about sanitation, especially if you're going to have raw milk and keeping the animal keeping it actually lactating so you can get milk and, you, and you're kind of a slave to it. You've got to milk it on a regular basis. There's a lot that goes into that. And I don't do that. But what I do and what you can do is spend a little bit of money and get some actual cultured buttermilk from the store and use it as a starter for your own buttermilk. This is all you need to make your own homemade buttermilk even though it's cheating with a starter, I guess. And it's very simple. One quarter cup to one quart of milk, or one quart total. One quart of buttermilk. Top it off with a freshly opened, this was just opened this morning, freshly opened bottle of milk or bag of milk, I guess, if you're in Canada. Just run it up to the neck. Here we go. Take a nice, clean, thin towel. Please leave it open to the air. Then put it in a cool, dry place for between 18 to 24 hours. If you let it go even longer, it it gets it ferments even more, and you get what may be called I think they call it clabber. It's almost like 
a yogurt, which is, this is almost the same as yogurt. Any yogurt has more sugar and is done with in, in, at a higher temperature. But you just stick it over into a cool, dry place in the corner of your kitchen, let it sit overnight, or like I said, uh, 24 hours is good. And there you have your own buttermilk. And then when you get near the bottom, you just use your own milk as a starter, your own buttermilk as a starter. And this buttermilk costs about four times or more what regular milk costs. So it's economical, but it's also, it tastes a lot better. And one thing you will need to be wary of though is, uh, I think they mix up this before they bought, before they put it in a container. So it's very, very, very smooth and creamy looking. Uh, this can be kind of, you know, for lack of a better word, kind of chunky. Uh, it's got texture to it. And especially if you let it go a little bit longer, uh, it can also get kind of a little stringy, almost pours like, like, uh, like white glue. Um, and that can also change depending on the temperature. When uh, our house is a little bit warmer in the summer, even though we have air conditioning, than in the winter. So, uh, and I noticed there is a difference in the buttermilk when uh, it's fermented at a different temperature. Now the neat thing about this is the uh, bacteria, the good bacteria in here, um, well, it's good for you. Uh, that's what I call good bacteria. But it's also full of other things that are, that are good for you. What are they, probiotics? Like maybe there's some animal biotics in there too. But it's just, I don't know, it's a healthy thing. And it makes all the difference in the world when you're making biscuits. Okay, If you've ever had a buttermilk biscuit, you use buttermilk instead of milk and put in a quarter teaspoon, half teaspoon of baking soda. And the acid in the buttermilk and the baking soda react and you get this fluffiness to the biscuit that is, it's just like, it's like nothing else in the world. Good old southern buttermilk biscuits. Um, you may think it's uh, kind of strange, thinking, hey, why are you letting milk go, you know, basically go sour? Because this is very sour. Um, it's, it's acidic, and acidic is sour. Well, when you start off with nice, fresh milk, and you have actual natural bacteria that are good, it sours from the bacteria, and, and it's good. When you have only pasteurized milk and the bacteria that gets in from once you've opened it and started using it, that's just random bacteria. It sours the milk too, but it's nasty. So I encourage you to try to make your own buttermilk and I also encourage you to try to drink some of it. Not, not a lot of people drink buttermilk, I guess. Most people, no, they don't like the sourness of it. But if you don't think of it as buttermilk, if you think of it as like, hey, I'm going to try some of this Greek yogurt that's not quite so sweet, uh, you can develop a taste for it. I didn't like buttermilk until fairly recently, and now I just love the flavor of it. Um, but it is an acquired taste. Um, don't think of it as having a glass of milk. It's not anywhere near the same. But it's delicious, and you can kind of keep your own going. Um, and one last tip, um, and I read this on the internet and I think I've, I have found it to be true. You'll want to re, uh, do a new batch about every seven days. You don't want to go any longer than seven days because the other harmful bacteria, or at least bacteria that, that can grow and make it not taste good, uh, they can start growing and you want to be able to have your, your healthy bacteria be the one that's in, in charge, so to speak, and dominate the whole process here. So uh, if you want to make, uh, if you're not going to use a quart, then use an eighth of a cup, which is two tablespoons, by the way, use two tablespoons into a pint. And if you only wanted a cup, use one cup and top it, uh, or, excuse me, one tablespoon and top it off with a, uh, into a cup of milk and let it sit for 24 hours. Uh, it doesn't matter the size. But anyway, I um, think you guys ought to give that a shot. Hope you enjoy it. And uh, like I say, do what you can with what you have, where you are. In this case, it's not exactly what you have. you got to go buy this. But this is going to be so much better than this. So give it a shot. God bless you all. See you next time.